Welcome to Where Her Heart Speaks, a show designed to challenge and disrupt ineffective thoughts and behaviors to help you not only embody peace, joy, calm, and certainty, but also to help you live the life you've always dreamed of living. Where Her Heart Speaks with Coach Catherine begins now. Hi there, it's Coach Catherine. Have you ever wondered about the state of your nervous system? Do your thoughts, behaviors, and actions come from your authentic self? Or are they trauma responses? Hey, we've all heard about the fight or flight response, but what does that really mean? Listen, I've created a quick and easy assessment for you to determine the state of your nervous system. You get to answer questions such as, is it keeping you safe or is it keeping you stuck? Or is it allowing you to be your authentic self and thrive? If you'd like to know the answer to those questions and how you can experience more peace and calm in your life, I wanna invite you to go to my website at www.katherinejames.com where you can find the assessment on the very front page. Welcome and welcome back to Where Her Heart Speaks. I'm Katherine James, international speaker, best-selling author, trauma-informed coach, and your host for this show, <laughs> Where Her Heart Speaks. <laughs> this week, we are diving into something that I hear so many women talk about. The topic, when you are her, being everything to everyone. So many women talk about how they find themselves being everything to everyone else. And I would say just like if we wanted to think about this, because I'm going to invite you to join some friends, have some friends invite you to join in on this conversation or on, join in on this listening. But if we wanted to think about it, um, these are women who may be caring for aging parents while also juggling a career and trying to hold their family together. They may be women who are the person that friends and family members are always calling when they need someone to talk to, or she may be a woman who's on several boards. You find that she is always cleaning up someone else's mess and she is always drained. If you know her, take a moment to invite her to join in with you on today's listening. Just go ahead and share the link right now. <laughs> I'm him, was shouted by Los Angeles Lakers guard, Austin Reeves. He shouted that just as he had made another basket. And out of nowhere, it's like he paused internally, time stood still. He just paused briefly internally to face his reality to celebrate himself and to celebrate his accomplishments. His energy in the moment was electrifying, even for those of us who watched game one between the Lakers and the Grizzlies from home. I'm him, like everything about that statement, his facial expression, his energy was felt in the moment. And as I sat reflecting, over the past few weeks of my life, which were consumed with orchestrating the final touches of my daughter's wedding, I thought about that statement over and over again. I thought about his energy. I thought about his body language. I thought about his excitement. I thought about him saying, I'm him and everything that came along with that statement. And I began to hear myself quietly say, I'm her. And as I listened to myself quietly say, I'm her, I thought about you. All of the women who are her. Not the her we celebrate, but the her 
who is everything for everyone else. As a recovering perfectionist, an overachiever, workaholic, and people pleaser, (laughs) I am very familiar with being her. I'm very familiar with being the person who felt the need to be everything to everybody. I'm very familiar with the person who not only created the pieces, but picked up the pieces, held the pieces, and laid the pieces down (laughs) for the people who were important in my life. I'm very familiar with that. I did it for those who were important to me and sometimes those who weren't important to me and people that I didn't know. Now, being that I'm the eldest child who was required to care for my siblings, I believe that this behavior was no doubt developed in my childhood. I learned early in life that if I was able to project what might happen and do my best to prevent it from happening, I might avoid getting in trouble or I might actually get acknowledged. My early years didn't leave room for me to think of myself or think of my own needs. Thinking of others was, it was, it was just more safe. It was just more safe. And my nervous system adopted this way of behaving so that I can remain in a place of safety to the best of my ability. And I would venture to say, if you're the her who is everything to everybody, this or something similar is likely your story. You may have been responsible for caring for your siblings. Maybe your parents never acknowledged you until you did something for them. You see, we learn early in life how to navigate life so that we can live in a state of safety. Maybe one of your parents was unstable emotionally and you found that you always had to be the one to make sure all of the pieces were in place. Or maybe you only received compliments when you handled situations well that were pertaining to someone else. Most women who are her have had the same lived experience. They've learned that serving others was safe. They've learned that serving others got them recognition or some form of acknowledgement. But listen, Being everything to everybody (laughs) at all times is unhealthy. And and frankly, you already know this. (laughs) It's, It's truly not something that can be sustained. Many who are her experience symptoms like irritability, inability to think clearly, or clearly articulate her thoughts. She suffers with uh, sleep issues, dealing with many nights where, where there's just a lack of sleep. Like you can't turn your brain off. You're too busy solving the problems of others. Um, I, I know as I was going through this process, there were so many nights I would wake up in the middle of the night and I would grab my phone, to go to my notes and jot down thoughts that were coming, jot down different plans, things that I needed to remember, things that I needed to talk to people about. Like people who are being everything for everyone else, they have a hard time sleeping because their brains don't turn off and they're just solving one problem after another. And oftentimes it has nothing to do with them. People or the woman who is this her that we're referring to, she, she has a lot of negative mind chatter. And you find yourself telling yourself things like, 
I'm the only one doing all of the work. <laughs> no one ever helps or asks me if I need help. And I'm going to say part of the reason that is, is because you've done a very good job of making it look like as though you have it all together, right? You um, may also find yourself telling yourself that you're not appreciated. And it just goes on and on and on. Other symptoms are, are anger. You find yourself that you're angry or that you're sad. And let me just say that when you're under a lot of pressure, when you're under or experiencing a lot of stress, even though you may have done work on yourself, even though you may have been through a lot of personal development courses, you may be uh, regularly practicing personal development uh, techniques and skills, you may have done the work on yourself. You may be doing the work on yourself and, and you know how to take care of yourself. Even though all of that is true, your trauma responses may still return. And I'm just going to say, I know during this time, as we were preparing for this wedding, mine did. Like while I was preparing for the wedding, I experienced most of those things. <laughs> I did. But I will say the beautiful thing about doing personal development work and living with a more regulated nervous system as a result of doing um, somatic work, body work, as a result of doing things like breathing and moving the body and releasing trauma out of the body, the beautiful thing about that is even though those responses may show up, you won't get stuck in those responses. You'll be able to recognize your feelings. You'll be able to recognize your thoughts and, and the behaviors as feedback rather than reality, which so many times when we've not yet done the work or we've not yet uh, come to a place of having or being able to live in a more regulated nervous system more often than not, when we have those feelings, thoughts, and behaviors, we take them as reality rather than knowing that it's just feedback. It's not truth. <laughs> it's just feedback. And, and so I was able to sit in a space of understanding that it's not truth. How I was feeling, the stories, the negative chatter that was showing up was not true, but there were messages coming up from my body and it was giving me feedback. So one of my goals for the past few years has been to be her. <laughs> Not the her that does everything for everybody as I had been, but the real her. Like the her of the him that Austin Reeves was acknowledging when he shouted, I'm him. <laughs> to be that her. And what it what became clear to me after the game, he shared about the emotions of the moment and how he had dreamed of being on a stage like that, how he was playing with some of the best players in the world and how he had gotten hot late in the game and, and just had fun in the moment. Like he was totally in the moment. He wasn't thinking about how he was overlooked and not drafted or who he would prove wrong as a result of not drafting him, but he was being his authentic self and living in the moment of him. <laughs> and that's what it's all about. So after I recognized my old response, the response of being everything for everybody, the response of being the people pleaser, after I recognized my old response, I made a decision to choose differently. I chose to be her. 
the her that honors herself first, the her that lives from her highest authentic self in every moment. I chose to be the her that allowed every fiber in her being (laughs) to just be who it desired to be. Now, if you're like me, you're sitting there, you're wondering, well, how did you do that? Like, I would love to make that choice, but I find so often that I fall back. I revert back to the trauma response and I have to go in and fix everyone else's problem. I revert back to the trauma response and I have to make sure that everyone else is okay. I have to put my her on the back burner to make sure everyone else is okay. And if that's you and you're sitting there and you're saying, how did you do that? How did you step into your her? Your her who was willing to honor herself. Your her who was willing to put herself first during a large, a big, a um momentous, <laughs> huge momentous time in your life. Like this was my daughter's wedding. I only have one daughter <laughs> and I wanted to make sure that it was going to be great for her. But during such a momentous time, how was I able to choose her? And I just want to share with you five ways that I entered into and remained in for the most part. I'm going to say that because I had some shaky moments, <laughs> but entered into and remained in the space of I'm her. Here are five ways that you can. So get your papers. If you don't have it already, get your pen and paper and just jot these down. Here are five ways that you can enter into your space of I'm her. The first is to set boundaries and stick to them. There were so many tasks that I was willing to take on and there were just as many, if not more, that I was not willing to take on either physically or financially. When I received quotes that were outside of my budget, I kept right on shopping. (laughs) When I didn't want to go outside for whatever reason or talk to anyone, I said, I'm on do not disturb and I stayed on do not disturb. Right? So the first one is to set boundaries and stick to them. The second one is to ask for and accept help. I realize I don't know everything. And although I am super resourceful and my corporate training and training from my master's program has made me really, really good at Conducting research, asking for help was a lot easier and and it was less time consuming than going out researching and finding information for myself. Now, what wasn't quite as easy was receiving help. For me, I found that receiving help was a little more uncomfortable. Why? because I'm used to doing things for myself. One of my trauma responses for many years was, if I called, they would not come. So I got into the habit of doing things myself. I lived by um, that, that mantra or slogan, like if it's to be, it's up to me. I lived by that for many years. And if I had to rely on someone else, my nervous system would immediately go into fight or flight. So that was a little more difficult for me. But again, because I regularly practice regulating my nervous system, doing techniques that will move me out of fight or flight and more into a state of calm, I was able to simply take a deep breath and move 
myself out of the way to let those who said yes to my request do what I had asked them to do. And I'm going to say, for those who responded to my ask, because not everyone did, (laughs) but those who responded to my ask, I am eternally grateful for the discomfort. So I, I'm just going to say that you you too may also experience feelings of discomfort as people are trying to fulfill your request, trying to support you in your ask. And if you find that you are feeling uncomfortable, simply take a deep breath and move on to some doing something that only you can do. Like that's what helped me. I did the thing that I knew no one else could do. And that kind of took my mind off of the fact that someone was doing something for me. That helped me to shift that along with the breathing, shift my nervous system into a state of calm and allowed me to focus on doing the thing that only I could do. The third thing is listen to your body. Listen to your body. This is so important. The body is always sending us messages. So many high achievers have developed a habit of ignoring the body to accomplish more and more. But this behavior, ignoring the body, for a prolonged period of time does a few things. One, we began to miss the signals. Two, it causes greater problems later in life. A lot of disease um, that people experience could have been avoided had we simply listened to our bodies. This is a challenge because like many other things, society doesn't necessarily um, celebrate people who are more prone to listen to their body, doesn't necessarily um, acknowledge in a positive light those who say, I did this from a place of intuition or my body is telling me that I want to rest. Like we are, society rewards people for listening or operating from their intellect, not necessarily from a physiological space or somatic, your soma. So this can be sometimes conflicting internally, but I want to encourage you to listen to your body with the understanding that if nothing else It's sending you messages. And if you continue to avoid those messages, you will no longer know that they're being sent and you're setting yourself up for various diseases, high blood pressure, diabetes, cancer. Like we want to get in the habit of listening to our bodies. So I did just that. I remember one day I stayed in bed nearly the entire day because I just felt tired. The body knows what it needs and it's really great about asking for what it needs. So again, just commit to getting good at hearing and honoring its requests. It said that those who listen to their bodies live longer. So the fourth thing um, I want to give you is learn to say no. During this time, I was really good (laughs) about saying no. I was good about saying no from the onset. Because what I know about me, one, I am an introvert and there were going to be a lot of people around. So I had to set myself up 
for success. But in saying no, from the very beginning, I made it clear that no out-of-town guests would stay at my house. They would all stay in a hotel. Because as an introvert, I need to get quiet. I need to have quiet so that I can, ref I can refuel. And if people were at my house, that was not going to support nor serve my higher self. Another thing I made clear was that I would not be responsible or solve anyone else's problems. And I didn't entertain opinions that did not add immediate value. Like I just was not willing to take those things on. And I had no problem saying, thank you for sharing <laughs> and letting that be. <laughs> So I ask you, what are you doing? What are you doing that you need to say no to? What do you need to stop doing? Who do you need to tell no? What do you need to delegate to someone else? Hmm. And the last thing I will give you that probably should be the first thing, but it's take time to regulate your nervous system. Remember to breathe throughout the day. Just take moments where you pause to breathe, slow, deep belly breathing. Periodically, just for a couple of minutes. You want to move your body or enjoy water on your body, warm water, cold water, all of these things helps to regulate your nervous system. I remember several days I began my days just meditating and soaking in my hot tub, closing out the rest of the world, centering, going within, meditating and soaking so that I could get through being what I needed to be for me. And at the end, <laughs> at the end, at the reception, let me tell you, when it was all over, I literally danced out of my shoes. <laughs> I danced and I danced and I danced and I danced. And I remember there was a time when I would not have done this. I had on a long gown. And every time I bent over, it hit the floor. There was a time when I would have been more reserved. I would have been more concerned about my gown getting dirty than my nervous system being regulated. But that's not who I am anymore. So I danced and I danced and I danced. And I had an amazing time. But I knew there was a part of me my body was saying, let's just release it all. Let's just release all of what's been built up. And again, I'll say this probably should have been the first. <laughs> Get in the habit of practicing regulation techniques daily. The more you do them, the more ingrained they will become and the easier it is to turn to them during times when your fight, flight, or freeze response is activated. So being the her that honors herself first, that focuses on being everything for her first, allows her to be her authentic self and live in the moment of her. It allows her to help others out of choice rather than obligation. It allows her to live with peace, joy, and calm. And it allows her to celebrate herself as she internally shouts, I'm her! I'm her! <laughs> I'm her. <laughs> Five ways to do that. Five ways to enter that space 
of I'm Her. Set boundaries and stick to them. Ask for and accept help, no matter how difficult it may be. Listen to your body. It has a wisdom that man cannot explain. Say no, say no, say no, say no. And take time, take time to regulate your nervous system. My prayer for you this week is that you will acknowledge the truth. You were not created to be everything to everyone. And you will embrace the truth. The latter her is available and waiting for you. I pray that you will make a choice and do what is needed to become her. And as I close, I'll remind you that in this life we get to choose Choose to live a sensational life. Peace and blessings. Thank you for listening to Where Her Heart Speaks with Coach Catherine, where Catherine aims to challenge and disrupt ineffective thoughts and behaviors to help you not only embody peace, joy, calm, and certainty, but also help you live the life you've always dreamed of living. Follow Catherine on Facebook and Instagram at I am Catherine James and visit www.catherinejames.com. Remember to live the life of your dreams. You must go within and return to the place where your heart speaks.